Okay, nah. Nah, this... <sighs> okay, oh, I don't make videos like this, but like, this is... Alright, I gotta talk to you about this one for real. Alright, let's get these lights on, let's get these lights on. Okay, so, loads of people are making videos on stuff like this right now. I'm not the only one. I know that T-Tube and Callum have just made videos about this. Uh, I think T-Tube actually made one a couple weeks ago. I had a passing fleeting thought uh, a few weeks ago and it was just in my head. I was like, oh man, um, AZ's Floette. One of the coolest Pokemon to, uh, to like never be released, basically, right? I thought about it for a moment. It was just a passing thought. I was like, AZ's Floette. And it was like, oh, AZ's Floette was referred to as the eternal flower. And then I thought, Paradox Pokemon, all Paradox Pokemon have two key words as their name, you know, Fluttermane, Iron Thorns, um, especially the past Pokemon, they have two different, different, two different words like Roaring Moon, you know, or Slitherwing, and I was like, oh my goodness, AZ's Floette, Eternal Flower, is AZ's Floette some form of Paradox Pokemon? I tweeted this out yesterday, finally, but if you look right here, like, on my, on, on, the, on this Discord conversation I was having with my friends, I actually put it in there one night before I was going to bed as the thought hit my mind and was like, wait, this, is, this could be a thing, you know? I know, like, a bunch of other people have already started making these videos, but I wanted to do this too just because I thought it would be fun and also maybe some of you guys haven't seen the other ones either. I'll link all the other videos down in the description below so you can make sure you get the full, full picture, but I'm going to go over the stuff that I've seen and the stuff that I want to bring to the table too. I don't even really know where to start with something like this outside of the fact that we all basically understand that there is a hidden landmass in the top right corner of, uh... Paldea. Everybody's kind of all come to the uh, un unified agreement that this hidden landmass in the top right corner of Paldea is Kalos, and that at some point we are going to get DLC that links the two regions together. That's basically what everyone's agreed on. Mostly at least, like I, I can zoom out on this map real fast and we can see this hidden landmass in the top right hand corner, right? This is, this is obviously something, there's something here. And if we head over to Reddit, Volcaronite made a blended image which, which basically fused the two maps together. And they obviously, look, they, it's, they link up so perfectly. And I don't, I'm not saying that in DLC we'll be able to go and explore the entirety of the Kalos map. Maybe it's just sort of like an area that connects the two. Sort of like how Sinnoh and Johto did it with the Sinjo ruins, I'm not sure. There's, like, there, there's obviously this cloud that they've done over the top here uh, in, the, in the Paldea art. And it sort of blends over the top of the Kalos map, and the land masses seem to connect oh so perfectly together. X and Y was a really, really weird game, because it didn't get DLC, it didn't get like a continued version or a third version, like Z was so obvious with Zygarde, there was the potential of like X and Y too, and none of them ever happened. There was so much content that was locked behind closed doors in X and Y, like the power plant, for example, where we were supposed to find Volcanion. AZ's Floette was in the game's code, and never actually released. Uh, there was there was a bunch of stuff in this game that we just never got to see. Zygarde just kind of was, you know, thrown in some cave. I think it was Terminus Cave, and I think T-Tube noted on this. He uh, has the ability Aura Break, and we all thought that we were going to get like a Rayquaza thing where like Kyogre growled on a fighting, but in this case it would have been Xerneas and Eveltal, and then Zygarde shoots him, breaks the two up, right? It, it was very, very clear to us that they didn't want to continue with X and Y, and instead did the develop on Sun and Moon, and gave Zygarde all the stuff that he needed in that game instead with his big, big, big 100% form, the doggo form, and then obviously you had to pick up like the Zygarde cells and cores and stuff like that in order to make a big, you know, that, that happened in Sun and Moon, not X and Y. And of course, if you remember, in the X and Y story, AZ fires off the ultimate weapon, shoots up into the air, comes back down, and I believe in the cutscene, it does kind of look like the beam comes up and straight back down into its origin point. I'm not sure if that's completely true. Let me look that up. So here, here's the cutscene. It's a little bit blurry. This is some old 3DS footage. Of course, it's blurry. The weapon fires. It launches into the air. I, I mean, I, you can't really see Paldea in this. Obviously, Paldea wasn't a thing back then. I, I, I'm not sure if they thought that that far ahead. But the weapon fires, right? You see it launch into the air, and it comes straight back down, and it seems to land at the point of its origin, right? It, 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 it lands right here, right? So it can't exactly be the, uh, uh, the blast itself that landed here. Maybe it could be. Maybe they retconned that. I don't know. But it could have been a stray blast, or maybe could have been uh, as a result of the original blast happening. Uh, causing some kind of tremor or like a, again, like I said, a stray blast because it is a beam of energy Maybe some of it split off hits the side. I, I'm not too sure right, but AZ created that original weapon and AZ is also <laughs> the same letters 
a stamp could, could stand for area zero. I mean, it's it's insane. And then you think about AZ's Floet, Area Zero Floet, Eternal Flower. Um, and I understand that Eternal Flower is longer than 12 characters, so it can't be a Pokemon name. Um, but they could, I don't know, change its name somehow, some way. It, it all just seems to strangely connect to each other. It's really, really weird. And not to mention, Area Zero is littered with Floets. There's other things that connect this too. Like, I'm just, I'm just like a, a crazy dude, like with a with a map of a bunch of like, you know, red pins and red like string connecting to each other. But like, there's another one as well where Roaring Moon's Dex entry in this game. Actually, let me pull that one up too. Roaring Moon's Dex entry in this game. It literally says, according to an article in a dubious magazine, this Pokemon has some connection to a phenomenon that occurs in a certain region. Hinting again at Kalos and Mega Evolution. God, it's such a sick Pokemon in it. It's so cool. No, I, look, I actually just feel so crazy because I have so many thoughts in my head and none of this is like organized or anything, but it's all coming out at once. Uh, like, I know X and Y wasn't the greatest Pokemon game. It was their first step into 3D and it's their 10th anniversary or 10 year anniversary next year. If we get some kind of DLC, Pokemon Day is literally around the corner. It's February 27th. Are we going to get some kind of DLC that connects the two together? There are so many things that lead us to believe that's the case. Another big thing, another big thing uh, that was that was shown off in, I believe, Callum's video. If we um, if we go to our boxes, right, I believe we can indeed search for Pokemon, right? The big search feature down here. And what's strange about this is we can go to things like ability, right? And let's just go to P, for example. Parental bond is here. Which is, in, which is interesting because the only Pokemon that gets parental bond is Mega Kangaskhan. We go to D, we have Delta Stream, we have Desolate Land, but we have all of these abilities for Pokemon that can't exist or rather don't exist and haven't really existed in Pokemon for like the last like six, seven years since Sun and Moon. That was the last time we had Mega Evolution. So why are these abilities in the game? These abilities, uh, granted, these abilities are in Sword and Shield and they are fully functional. Uh, while they are a little bit buggy, they are fully functional. If you've watched any of the Them We Fight videos we do, the abilities are in the game, they just can't be obtained through legal methods. Normally, they just hide them from, you know, people's sight. Like, it, you'd never actually bump into the ability Desolate Land or Delta Stream, right? You, we, we, you can put them on a Pokemon with a like PK Hex and then load the game up and the ability will work, but you can't see the game, see it in the game normally. This is in front of us. Now, the other thing I am interested in looking at is... Light of Ruin, which is not in this game. If, if you don't know what Light of Ruin is, Light of Ruin is an attack that AZ's Floet got. And it was in, I believe, most Pokemon games with its own description and stuff like that, but was completely removed from BDSP. Apparently it's had its description changed in this game, although I can't see it on my screen right now. So why don't we try to force Light of Ruin in the game? If we head over to Bulbapedia first, we can see that in, I'll reveal it one at a time, just to be dramatic, right? X and Y and Auras, it, it states, or X, Y, Auras, Sun and Moon, Usum, Swish, and Legends Arceus. Apparently this moves in Legends Arceus too. Drawing power from the Eternal Flower, this user fires a powerful beam of light. This also damages the user quite a lot. It's had the same description, right? BDSP, it says this move can't be used, it's recommended this move is forgotten, once forgotten this move can't be, rem can't be remembered. And then in Scarlet and Violet, for the first time in 10 years, this game updated the move. Drawing power from the Eternal Flower, this user fires a powerful beam of light. This also damages the user terribly. There's no reason to, 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 change, to change this move, okay? And I'm, from what I understand, I need to test this. I'm pretty sure you can't use this move in Sword and Shield either. So let's just let's just go somewhere. Let's just let's just fight a wild Pokemon. I've given it to a regular Floet, because obviously AZ's Floet's not in the game. But I'm gonna give it to a regular Floet, and we're just gonna see. Why don't we just have a look and see if Light of Ruin even works, or if it's got a type, or it's got base power, or anything like that. Let's just jump into a battle with. Listen, you'll do. So we have our Floet. Okay, Light of Ruin is is right here. It has its power, it has its accuracy. And it has the description we just talked about. So what is the animation? You can't use this move. I also put Steel Beam and Corobast on this move set as well because they both share, all three of these moves basically share the same description, except Light of Ruin is the only one that describes itself as taking damage terribly. And it's almost like, it's like Dark Cry's Dark Void, right? Uh, when you have Dark Void on Smeargle, it's like, oh, you can't use that move. 
Um, but it also kind of has the same sort of thing. Because in Sword and Shield, if you had a move you couldn't use, it would just be grayed out. This move isn't grayed out. It just says you can't use this move. Maybe it needs to be used by a specific Pokemon, perchance. They might be wondering, oh, yeah, well, you can't have AZ's Floet as a Paradox Mon. You can't, you can't have AZ's Floet in this game as a Paradox Mon. It's not old enough. Uh, if it was going to be a Paradox Pokemon from the past, it's like barely a few thousand years old. It it can't it can't be in the game as a Paradox Mon. Well, then I have this. What are we saying about this? Because Entei, Suicune, and Raikou are only a few hundred years old, I believe, right? The whole burning of the, 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 the burn tower and stuff like that in a critique, like, only happened, like, a few hundred years ago. There's something, bro, I'm just telling you, there's some, there's, there is something going on. And when it comes to the disc Pokemon, I know this is just a small thing, but it's made up of hexagons too, and what's, what's Zygarde's deal? These hexagons, I don't think that they're the same Pokemon, but maybe there's some kind of relationship. I don't, I, I obviously don't know, but that, that's, that seems kind of interesting to just point out. It like, feels like nobody's, nobody's mentioned that at all either. Other things to make note of are the Sundial in Anastar City. Uh, again, it's a big crystal, uh, has some relation to Megastones. Dianxi potentially as well. Carbink and Dianxi are like separate Pokemon, but are clearly related in some form. I, there, there's, there's that. And then, of course, there's the infamous trademarking of the Pokemon X and Y logos, which I think this is hard copying because it's been 10 years, so it makes sense that they've got to redo the trademarks. But it's, you know, again, it's just another little thing in the massive, like, pool of potential things that could lead to us getting Kalos DLC. If I'm completely honest, the whole AZ's Floet thing being a Paradox Pokemon is the biggest thing that's, like, led me down this rabbit hole and... Since it's something that sort of like popped into my head and then I looked up online and it seemed that it popped into a bunch of other people's heads too. It was just like, maybe that there is something going on here. I'm just excited to see what they do. I, I, it, X and Y was, it was a great game. I really enjoyed it. It was, it's got some really, really big memories for me. Maybe it's the nostalgia talking, uh, but I would love to go back, even if it's just to a part of Kalos for, for, us to, for us to look around in. And if they do bring the whole region back, they do a double region like they did with like gold and silver, heart gold, so, so that would just be awesome to go revisit Kalos. I think the biggest thing, and I know you guys all know this, but I love Mega Evolution. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So it, it, any hint that we potentially get Mega Evolution again is absolutely awesome. Uh, there, there's, I guess there's a line to be drawn here, the parallel with Paradox forms and stuff like that. If, if that Paradox Salamence is so close, you think about all the crystals and stuff, what are the Mega Stones? Are they not crystals too? There's the Keystone, and then there's also the stone that Mega evolves specific Pokemon. There's a lot of just like weird things going on with like crystals and magical stones and stuff like that with these two things. That just seems way too, way too close to not be connected in some kind of way. I, I don't know. I don't know. You guys, you guys can just obviously think about this by yourself. I'll link the other videos that I saw and other other information in the description below, so you can make your own sort of like decision or. Your own, you could you could come to your own sort of like viewpoint, but let me know what you think. I I don't know. I've not been this excited for, you know, a third version or DLC for a, a Pokemon game like ever. Um, so I I'm just I just I want to know. I I need to know. We need another direct or something. I am I'm, I'm I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, let me know in the comment section what you think, and I'll see you guys next time.